You ready for this? I was born ready, dude. So. <laughs> All right. Well, hello and welcome to the Photo Brigade podcast. I'm Robert Kaplan. Today I'm with my friend Alexis Quaresma. How are you doing, sir? Doing great, man. Thank you for having me. That's how, this is uh, your second time on the podcast. Yep. You've been on our podcast. Uh, it's been years. I don't know how long. We think it was like three or four years ago. I, I'm I think more than that, dude. I think it's five. I think I want to say 2013. Yeah. Back then it was just audio. You and I in, in Central Park yep. chilling. Uh, just having a conversation. So um, I'm really glad to get you on here so we can also talk about your career, where you've gone since then, and also look at some of your beautiful work. So yep. uh, before we get started, just want to give a quick shout out and thank you to Adorama for the use of their event space. You always let me use it. It's really great. Uh, check them out, adorama.com slash events for all of the, what they do and Adorama TV for all of what they do as well. We're streaming on Adorama TV. So if you have any comments, leave us uh, a comment and we'll try to monitor those. Um, and then also t thanks to uh, Canon Professional Services for all your support, Tenba Bags, um, and uh, thank you. All right, let's go. Alexis. Sweet. Let's chat. Yeah. Um, so do you remember how we met? We met because I saw you online doing a lot of activities with the Photo Brigade, and like I think I know you and some of my friends, and I reached out to you um, via DM, I believe, on the Photo Brigade or directly on Instagram. Okay. And then um, I was telling you I was going to be in New York, and you are like, yeah, let's, how about we do a podcast? Oh, okay. So that, that was the first time I met you then? Yep. The, that was the, the first time we met, was. yeah. Because I couldn't remember exactly when it was that we met, because since then we've been at, at to Eddie Adams workshop at the same time you were on black team I was on the black team in 2015 yeah in 2015 helping out and I was a producer at the time and you helped out my team because we did a lot of lighting and you do that's a, right that's right yeah, out yeah, in yeah. the woods remember yes yes out yes. in the woods with a football team and cheerleaders that was cool that's right because I did introduce you to a few students too that I yeah were good yeah yeah so um anywho uh you are in town. We saw each other at the uh, Photo Plus Expo here mm -hmm. at the Javits Center, which it seems that you come in pretty much every year for. Yeah, I try, I try to come to New York at least once a year. I should be a lot better than that. I yeah. come here at least <laughs> at least twice or three times a year. Yeah. Because uh, you just I was talking to somebody else that um, has nothing to do with photography, but it's just in business. Uh -huh. And he's uh, real big about pushing and being there in person and getting in-person meetings. And that's how important that and, is. And that's what you're doing. So show show this real quick to the camera here in uh, front of you. This, this one? one right here. So this is... These yeah. are these, yeah, the, the the books that you make. Yeah. So this, was, this is actually one that you hand off to um, them after the fact, but you show the big hard hardbound book, right? Yep, this one. Cool. All right, there you go. We'll put the big one. <laughs> Sorry. Switch it up. No <laughs> but this is the the bigger book right here. This is my portfolio book. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and so I'm gonna go through some of your your photos as we talk about it. So yeah. so if you guys are wondering, this is the actual exact layout of my portfolio book, but it's in physical form. And here you'll see it. Oh, so this is the front and back cover. Yep. So okay. yeah, you see it here, the front and cover. That's why it has everything. That's perfect. Okay. So. Um, you, you, we were talking about how some people call you a sports photographer, but that's not the case. You, you do um, on location and studio portraiture for the yeah. most, most part. And it's not just sports, although we're seeing a lot of sports right here. You're heavy in, in the sports. Yeah, I, 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 you know, it's ironic. I, I focus a lot on athletes and I guess it's kind of what, what I fell into, but I, I am not um, by all means a, a hardcore sports fan like some people are. Um, but don't get me wrong, I love photographing sports, um, but it's just like, I, it's what I do, but I could expand and do a lot more, you know? Right on. Um, and then when did you get this this bug for all this lighting? Like what, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I <laughs> when I started out, I, yeah. I started with small systems. It seems like you're using all large system, you know, big, big units and everything. Did you start small and grow big? Like how did it, how did it begin? I, you know, one of the photographers that influenced me the most or got me really excited about photography. Um, I, I know everybody, uh, talks about that the portraiture raised about Richard Avedon. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember my, uh, photography teacher in college being really excited about him and showing him my, um, showing me his work. Um, and, and, and I was like, I wasn't blown away by it. Um, I was like, like that's, I was like, that's, I'm like, it's cool, but it's like nothing. Um, the photographer that did like got me, uh, you know, like I said, thrilled and excited and looking forward to photography was Jill Greenberg. Okay. Uh, seeing her work, and I'm like, ah, wow, that's amazing. I want to do stuff like that. Like I'm, you know, re really thrilled to like dive into more to, to photography. Um, and the way I started out, uh, I just ended up, I, I, I knew nothing about lighting because I was. Um, one of the first photography instructors I worked with pushed, oh, people look best in natural light, right? And and, mm -hmm. and I bought that, right? Because when you're a student and somebody says something and they look established and they say something, you tend to believe them. Sure. Um, until I, I ended up 
working with them, you know, one of the, you know, the, let's just say events, I won't get specific. And then I found out the reason they said that is because they were the lady, laziest son of a gun ever. Like, <laughs> cause like, they're lazy. Yeah, because they didn't want to bring, like, if you had to bring a reflector or something extra, like, oh, I don't want to carry that. Yeah, like, right? For your minimal, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> and then, then aside, and I just started to think, wow, like, like that's like this, that's his opinion. That's just the way he likes to work. Um, and, and that's actually one of the things I say a lot now whenever I speak or I teach that, look, what I'm saying to you is my point of view, is my perspective. Sure. And it's really, really skewed. Like, I, I equate it to, like, if you were getting, if I'm teaching you lighting or photography, because my, my style, it's my style. Um, if, you know, if you're getting your news, I would equate it to getting your news from, like, a news source for, like, Infowars or, like, Fox <laughs> News. is very, like, you know, opinionated. <laughs> okay. uh, and that's what I try to make a point with people. Just because I, you know, I'm not preaching you to use a bunch of lights. I'm not doing it. That's the way what I like to do, and that's what I like to do. Are you I'm, comparing yourself to the Infowars guy? No. Well, I'm saying my perspective on, <laughs> on teaching. Like, you know, that, 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 you know, that yeah, can yeah. give people an idea how, like, sure, when sure, someone sure. talks or, or speaks, uh, you, you should always realize that it's their point of view. That sure. it's not, you know, like, all... It's not. It's, it's not, not the all be all. There are no set rules. Yeah. Uh, and, and to answer your, your question, it's like I just um, I, I learned by doing. So I ended up buying like five strobes uh -huh. and literally practicing on my own or my little brother and sister or whoever was sitting in front of me. Okay. Yeah. And and what is your background? So when did you pick up a camera? Um, and and where where did you you ended up going to school for photography? Yeah. Um, where did you go and, and talk about that? Um, well, by one of the things I say when people ask me for advice, um, I like the best advice I could say is don't listen to anyone because I got into photography really late because I was always interested in it and I knew my a lot of classmates in high school that took photography courses mm -hmm. and I always just be like, man, how's, how's the how's the photography class? And they always complain and they were like, oh, it's great, man, but it's so much work, right? And listening to them say that. Like made me not want to take it hmm. and then in college i had no idea what i wanted to major in um, but i always loved drawing since i was little and i always loved computers so i kind of combined that two and did graphic design mm -hmm. and then uh in college the the you know to to get an option in graphic design and photography there's a lot of overlap yeah so there's sure. only like three courses or like four courses in my school that were like you know to to double major in both um so i started taking a lot of photography courses and kind of just fell in love you know when i shot my first roll of film it was like magic to me you know seeing the role develop um and then i just kind of got into photography from there and um i ended up dropping out you ended up dropping out right. yeah because they uh the head of the photo department um you know he, he was great but he just didn't take digital so so serious at the time because it was kind of in between well, you know? no that's funny you mentioned that because right when i went to school is when when we switched it we're the same age i think yeah Thir i'm 35 same here yeah. okay yeah so we went through school the exact same time and i remember being a freshman or a sophomore and buying the digital camera on the first one and being like made fun of a little bit by by the by my professors or whatever because I was going digital but of course a year or two later it's like everyone's only shooting digital and yeah. now they don't even develop film at all yeah it's hard to find in the lab the lab I used went out of business do you um how much film if any do you ever use Whenever I get a chance, if we go back here to use film, these two are actually shot on film. Okay. Draymond Green, and then uh, this was for the New York Times, uh, Chris Paul, and it was for Uninterrupted and Draymond Green. Those four on film. When, whenever I could work it into the budget and it fits in the timeline, I, I do it specifically. Um, um, I use it, you know, whenever I can. And so, so why? Because of the lenses uh, of you know Hasselblad uh is a square format uh -huh. and it's one less thing to worry about uh -huh. versus vertical horizontal uh, -huh. uh and i just like the look of those lenses specifically okay because you know a lot of people say um you know a lot of salespeople are like oh you, you know you can shoot it with our camera digital camera has high megapixel count and you could just crop it square and it's the same thing it's not like the lenses for Hasselblad are, are made a specific way right and they project you know a, a six by six centimeter image sure versus a 35 millimeter you know lens and, and and you know that's just getting real specific and then the film look um i had never believed this un until i did it like the shot of uh, uh chris paul i shot it with the same setup and everything um with uh, a 5ds and also the kodak porta 400 uh -huh. um and this is like straight out it came out beautiful nice and pleasing and and, and the Digital one from you know the the, the can you know, I love Canon but the digital one like the skin tones were way different uh -huh. and this one I just liked it a lot better. There's something so. that that you just can't change or, or mimic uh, mm -hmm. with film. Yeah, and it's true. I didn't even think about the lens uh, because yeah, if you crop it, you're you're cutting off the um, you know the look of that lens. Uh, you're cutting off the edges of, of a of a you know regular 35 millimeter lens, yeah. and that changes. 
the, well, they, they, not only that, but they all have different physical characteristics. Right. Um, you know what I mean? The reason why people pay so much money from like a for a prime lens is because their um, uh, characteristic flaws of that lens tend to be visually eye pleasing and beautiful. So right. That's that's the main thing. That's why I shoot with uh you know with a Leica M3 and I shoot with older lenses from like the 60s and 70s because they give you a specific look. So you do you ones. so you do shoot around a little bit natural light. Yeah, with my Leica, yeah. Everything <laughs> on my Leica is black and white. I shoot with the T Max 6400. Oh wow! Um, do you develop it yourself? Just, God no, I don't <laughs> no. develop it or, 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 or scan it myself. So I think that um, you know, obviously, you you got into the business, and, and and it seems like in the last few years, you've really started shooting a lot of cool stuff. Um, I guess it's been more than a few years that you've been shooting cool stuff, but I mean like famous, very famous people, big assignments for big um, publications, and now you know, for art directors, for, you know, advertising and, and so on. Can you t tell me about how you got in your foot in the door to, mm -hmm. to start shooting? I think you probably started with editorial work and then worked yeah. your way into. Yeah. Uh, well, I started actually with uh, Little League work. Little, well, Little awesome. League High School. So that's great. Um, one of the biggest things I like to say um, to people like this, this industry in general, um, I don't know what your take would be on it, but it's, it's very literal. Like you can't tell someone you want to do something. You literally have to show them mm -hmm. like, right. So you, you can't say, um, I, I want to do like stylized lit portraits of athletes, mm -hmm. right? Or hire me for that. You have to show them you could do it. So right. you have to um, go out and do the work. So like I said, I started shooting uh, Little League and everything I shot in Little League, I was always like blown away by two page spreads on the SI and I treated it like I was shooting for SI. And then I would like to do portraits too. So I treated it like it was like a Nike shoot, even though I was shooting like, you know, Little League, like, like 12, 13 year olds and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'd say, this is a high school. T this is a personal project. This is my um, old high school. <laughs> um, I told him to get the best student athletes for from each sport, and I wanted to do a nice group portrait of all of them. And I wanted to have a nice, you know, image like this to show, you know, Nike or any potential client. And I went out and I did it. Right. That's it, that's it, a group portrait to the next level. It's yeah. Amazing. So I want because I enjoy doing group portraits. Actually, I know it could be stressful, but like once you break it down, it could actually be really cool. You could do a lot. Um, but but to that point, like right, if you want to get hired to do something like this, you have to go out and do it and show yeah. you could do it. So that's essentially how how I've been doing it. And now I'm getting into directing. Uh huh. And I'm writing, producing, directing, uh, and, and you know, getting you know small spots that I want to go out and show. And, and that's what I'm showing now too. No one's gonna say, "Oh, Alexis, you want to direct here? Let me give you 100k. You know, go have at it." Right. But you have to prove and show you could do it. Understood. That's that's really amazing that, that you do that. And then you're talking about directing too. Mm -hmm. Is that so you're you're doing video work as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. And and then you've also been doing explain what it was that you showed me where the, the you use oh, your phone. motion poster. Motion posters. Yes, yes, because you know everything all like movie posters and everything are, are being switched from like paper posters to uh -huh. um to flat panel television, like everywhere like this. So you kind of got to do a little bit of motion everywhere, which which fits well for for social media and everything. Right. Um, and 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 have you been getting hired yet for that type of work or no, or, not yet. Or is uh, that, so that's one of these things that you're talking about. You're going out and just yeah, I want to build a good like solid portfolio. This is like one of them. I, um, I wrote, directed and uh, this one. I designed the poster for it and that's a motion poster too as well. Um, and these are the still grabs of the, the short that we directed on the right hand side. Uh, so that's kind of why I'll be out. So in the app, everything. basically, w when you sh you know, put oh, your that's the live portrait. Yeah, that's, that's to show the motion portrait. Yeah, right, right, the right. motion poster. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Um, all right. So, uh, what would you say has been, uh, you know, transitioning? So, how how did you make this transition from the edit? So, you, so you were talking about the the you know shooting Little League. Yeah. And and shooting at home. How did you end up getting those first jobs at SI and, and everything? I, uh, well, I, I know that that might be a little different because no, uh, no, totally. I um, I um, uh, uh, the reason why I'm here and the reason people, the people that do know me that know me, the little small phone I have, is because of two people, um, Al Bello and Brad Smith. <laughs> uh, Al Bello was one of the only people who selflessly helped me out. Um, I had redone my website, I think, back in 2010-ish or so, or 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just wanted to get input from other established photographers. And I saw his uh, work at SI, like, regularly, you know, the two-page spreads. Um, and I sent to him, like, hey, what do you think, you know, my work? Uh, 2010, actually, I think, is when I reached out. And then um, he replied and said, hey, man, I think it's great. Um, he replied with a 45-minute phone call. You know, he helped me out yeah. a lot, told me, you know, who to, what editors to reach out to and everything. And then I stood in touch with him for about a year. And then that's when he told me about the Eddie Adams workshop. Mm -hmm. and, and then I applied and like, thankfully I got in. 
And then that's where I met Brad Smith. Mm -hmm. He was the with the New York Times at the time. Mm -hmm. and he was the editor of my group. And uh, he was also, you know, the group that I produced. He was the team leader, the team and, editor. And, yeah. Yep. And I've known him from the New York Times since I interned at the New York Times a million years ago. So yep. Brad, is, Brad and I are great yeah. friends too. So and he's, I, he's I, such a good guy. Yeah. I ran and, into and Al. Yeah, and I'll, both of them are. Both yeah. of them are great. I like they're responsible for all my my success, dude. So I gotta you know thank them. And so then, then Al, or then not Al, but um, Brad ended up at. Sports Illustrated mm -hmm. after he was with the New York Times when he was your team editor. Yep. So the the biggest advice I could tell people number one is to stay in touch and follow up with people. I did that with Brad. Like everything went well at the workshop. Uh, it went well. I stood in touch with him afterwards. Um, and then finally, like a year later, he hired me for an assignment in the New York Times. Uh, and I and I treated it like like you know it was like the biggest which it was you know at that time that was the first time um, somebody asked me w when did your career change or when did you feel like you make it? And I'm like, well, I'm still trying to make it, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but yeah. but the, that the first assignment Brad gave me was the first time I ever had, like when I walked in the room and, and, and people uh, were like, Oh wow. Wow. You're with the New York times. And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, it's like they opened doors for me and everything. And I was like, it's amazing. Wow, I had a lot of prestige to, to shoot yeah. for that. And that's the first time I kind of experienced that. Um, and uh, it's kind of what you experience doing a shoot for SI or, or anyone, you know what I mean? Um, and anyhow, that assignment went really well. Like he liked it. And then, uh, um, he sent me an email. He's like, "Hey, I just wanted to give you a heads up and let you know I'm leaving the New York Times to be, you know, the director of photography at Sports Illustrated. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to continuing our work relationship." Uh, and then you got to take initiative too all the time. Like when Brad first started at SI, uh, he took a picture of the entrance, and uh, and you know put a comment on it uh, going to work. And I commented on it. Uh, like one of the first comments I was like, "Damn, Brad, that's an epic entrance," because he was real nice. He replied, "Yeah, waiting for you to come visit." I don't know if he was serious or if he was playing, but right after that, I booked my flight to New York for the following month for like two weeks. That's and awesome. And then the next yep. day, I sent him an email, and I'm like, hey, as a matter of fact, I'm going to be in New York, Brad, for uh, uh, next month from this day to this day. Could I swing by and see you? And then we replied, we made a meeting, and then um, he greeted me with a hug, and then he brought in all the editors one by one um, to, to look at my book. Yeah, he's great. And then, and I have a very similar story with him, too, and his move there and just thinking about how, you know, when I had first come to New York and met him at the Times and then he was the director of photography at SI and going mm -hmm. to visit him at the Time Life building. Very cool. I completely get it. And, and that's the way that I think that a lot of editors um, are, but a lot of editors aren't that way, too. Yeah. So it's really nice to, to have somebody do that for you. OK, so um, how how has the. Uh, editorial work now transitioned into the more commercial and the more advertising are you still really trying to i'm still trying to, to get, i've gotten stuff but i'm still trying to get it but essentially um i always this could be taken out of context but i always try to shoot what i want mm -hmm. um you know what i mean and, and that's the work that i show all the time like a, um kind of if you go back to um, photo mechanic to the uh, this one right here okay so i shot this for me, like even though you only get like you know ten minutes with them, I'm always, I always do extra work and, and extra homework and, and set up extra lights to have my own look ready. Mm -hmm. and, and then I always like this is what that goes next. Oh, right? it's oh, no. not next. Well, Here, let me sorry. take it down for a sec. All right, sorry. Let me just go back to. Uh, I gotta get to it. Yeah, but like, um, for example, when we go back to that one, that's like, there you go. That's what the magazine wanted. Uh, which is great. Uh, Chris Hersek came up with the idea that constitutes the exploding powder, and then it was my, you know, job to find out how to execute it. Um, and then this is kind of just like the look that I want. I like it more darker and moodier, you know, with the colors that I like. Um, and I always make sure I, I, I try to get something for myself, because I always feel like if you're just gonna do what the editor wants or what they want, then, then you're just doing a just get a day job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I always try to give them what they want. And then in addition, what something I can have for myself and say, like, this is my style. This is how I like to shoot. Um, and, and I walk away with something. Uh, and with, you've done that in the past with 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 I think it was for, for the Brad. first time with Brad. Yeah. Where he's like, this is exactly what we want. But then you set it up so it would shoot two different lighting yeah, scenarios at one, one time. Yeah. So uh, like with those things, again, it's like um, it, it's this is all I do. I can't sing. I can't dance. So, <laughs> you know, what I, mean? I take this seriously. Uh, so on that assignment, I knew exactly what Brad wanted. And he was like, you know, just get a great seamless and one nice soft lighting. Um, it, you know, it, it's a nice, you know, nicely lit portrait. And, and it was like your typical, like, you know, nice portrait, but like, like pretty generic. And I remember thinking when he gave me this, I was super stoked when he gave me the assignment. Mm -hmm. But I remember thinking, I'm like, man, like if, if these get published just with that generic look, 
with my name on it, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't be proud to show them. Right. So I was like, I got to figure, I had done enough assignments at, at that time to tell you, uh, to know that if they say you're going to have like an hour with someone, you mm-hmm. could very well only have 20 minutes. Or if they tell you you have, you know, 20 minutes with someone, you could very well only have five. Mm-hmm. So I didn't want to waste my time, you know, doing, you know, screwing around, doing my own thing when I knew Brad needed this and like yeah. a list, like like this length of my arm, like a shot list. It needed a bunch of things. Yep. And that was my first assignment for SI. And I'm like, dude, I don't want to screw this up. You know, it needs to be well. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I did the extra homework on how to do two setups at once. That's great. Yeah. So this is a, a, a newer project that yes. you're working on. Can you talk a little bit about who this is and why you're doing this project? Yes, that is Marina Jacoby. She is Miss Nicaragua 2016. Uh, and I reached out to her because of a lot of the unfortunate events that are going on in Nicaragua. Uh, basically, I'm an immigrant. I came here to the United States in 1989 to escape the war and revolution that was going on back then. Uh, and unfortunately, the same things that, you know, that happened back then are happening now with the, you know, with the same dictator that was there in the 80s uh-huh. so to kind of try to bring attention to uh what's going on there right now uh i reached out to her to see if she wanted to do a series of images uh that you know would have her representing nicaragua and um you know and have like the concepts and ideas and uh, themes like kind of represent what's going on there currently now mm-hmm. and uh it was great because this got picked up by newspapers and news stations down in, in latin america wow Wow. Yeah. Are you are you continuing this project or is it was it just a one sort, sort of time thing with her? No, I want to continue it because of how much my whole thing is. It's like um, if you're I want to continue it until there's change happens in the crowd, because my whole thing is like if you're quiet, that means you're complacent. You're OK with what's going on. Mm-hmm. And I'm not OK with what's going on, which is like, you know, there's been 400 innocent people murdered, you know, thousands injured and people kidnapped. Um, and I I'd sent, definitely want to bring attention to that until there's this change hopefully you know wow that's intense mm-hmm. hello vanessa <laughs> oh shout out to vanessa thank you vanessa uh, <laughs> you know vanessa. she's a good friend of mine yeah so i'm gonna pull up these uh photos here of it'll take a second probably for them to load because we these ones oh no these ones don't get big for some reason huh full size anyways so these are some of your uh, tear sheets mm-hmm. um some pretty amazing work uh can you tell me sort of like what is your um, what's your goal in the next five years? Like, let's pretend that that we uh, don't have another podcast for another five years. Yeah, it's been five years ago and a lot's happened in those five years. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope, you know, my goal in the next five years is to be directing more. And uh, um, I love to direct and I want to kind of do the whole package. I like to direct, do the key art for it and have my hand in the motion art uh, motion posters too mm-hmm. uh but I, I love actually writing and directing which is really really cool which is a, a huge piece in itself if you think photography is a lot of work try writing directing and producing it. it's an insane amount of work that so, is pretty insane and and are you what kind of gear are you using to do uh this production i hire i work with a cinematographer okay and i work with the gaffer directly for the looks okay uh cause so I'm, you're so you're you're directing you're yep. not you're not actually holding the cameras for mm-hmm. the this I'm, type of work i'm not interested at all in, you know in, in in working with the cameras or, or figuring all that stuff out i'm more about like the writing it the idea mm-hmm. and the vision um, and then working directly, like I said, usually the cinematographer works with the, the gaffer to figure out all the lighting and the looks. Yeah. But I, I have the visuals down completely and I work directly with the with the gaffer and just getting the lighting down. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I've talked, my biggest concern with that was because, you know, cinematographers are, are really, you know, respectable, the experienced ones, you know, their stuff. So I, I, you know, I've been talking to a really experienced ones and I'm like, hey, you know, I want to be a director this is how I'm going about it. Like, what's your take on it? I'm like, cause I, I don't want to be disrespectful. You know, you're this talented person, but I'm like kind of bypassing you and saying, Oh, I want the looks like this. I want to show like that. Uh, and I've talked to a few experienced one for any, uh, anyone out there wondering. Uh, and they said, that's, that's what you want. Like you either want a director to tell you exactly what they want and have a vision mm-hmm. or, um, this is what one cinema, really experienced cinematographer told me, um, you either want that or you want a director that lets you have full creative control. Right. Right, right, and right. I, that just gives me like panic attacks. Right. Like, doing that. Like, well, some I think some directors aren't necessarily the same, like a visual talent, like the cinema cinematographer might be. And that the cinematographer brings that element. Just like you know, some directors might not be lighting gurus like you are, and they yeah. really need the gaffer to, to to help them do their thing. Or the, yeah, the DP. Um, or the DP. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, that that it, I don't know, dude. It's just yeah, that's in, insane to let 
that much visual or creative control to, to give it in the hands of somebody and give them full control. It, that takes a lot of trust. Um, I mean, I could maybe see myself doing that um, if I really trusted a cinematographer and had a style that I really liked that mesh with mine. Because uh, the last project that I did with Marina, uh, I had an amazing, I worked with an amazing stylist for that one, and she actually brought the production up on that one. Um, her ideas were a lot better um, than mine, and uh, um, it, she brought any vision that I had. She just made it better, and, and th you know that's what you want. And and if I could work with a, uh, you know, with a cinematographer that's that talented, then then in that case, yeah, it would be great. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so so what about the business end of things? Like, mm -hmm. you you live in San Francisco. Yeah, well, I live in technically in Livermore, an hour east of San Francisco. Oh, okay. So not, not in the city, city. Well, okay, so <laughs> but I mean, it's still cost of living is still expensive. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, r maybe not as relative to uh, San Francisco, yeah. the city, but um, doing what you love. You know, some people well, they're, they're they're amazing photographers that are, are photographers and filmmakers and directors and whatever that 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 are doing what they love, but they're not making it by. You mm -hmm. seem to be making it by. Because I also do what I don't love. So I okay. do like headshots so and if, if someone, I, uh, it's rare, but if someone needs a wedding, I'll, I'll shoot a wedding if they know my style, they yeah. hire me directly and that's good money. If I, they I, hire you to do what you do. Yeah, exactly. pretty much. Know? And they pay, the, you know, they, and they pay. I said, uh, <laughs> the best negotiating tactic I found uh, is being willing to walk away. Oh yeah. Really, all of a sudden you become more desirable, you know what yeah. I mean? So I, I do that, I just don't post it. Because right. it's like it won't fit. Like if I put a regular I'm not a headshot photographer, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I still I could do headshots and then I just don't um I just don't post that. Um so that certainly helps. You know, a lot of you know, it's it's funny because a lot of photographers don't don't know that or don't get that. You know, you don't have to post everything that you shoot. Yeah. I only post what I love and the, the images I'm really proud of. How many people, as we go through some of your Instagram work here, mm -hmm. um, art directors these days, I've had many come in and, and not come in, but tell me that they, they look at Instagram more so than actual websites. They're like, what's yeah. your Instagram? Do you, you know, what's your presence on here? What do you have? You've got almost 10,000 followers on here. How, mm -hmm. how have you set, how, how do you feel that Instagram has helped your career in, or, it, or hurt <laughs> no it, it's helped it uh, thankfully not hurt uh because I, I you know i've been you know posting less but it's helped me because it's like i i've had people say hey dude i see how much you're hustling and how much work you do you should meet so and so uh or you know editors like when i hit them up they're like oh i've been up in your instagram and see what you know what you've been doing uh and that's how they stay in touch you know what i mean um a creative director that i'm planning on meeting tomorrow like we're connected on on facebook uh -huh. uh, and he comments on my work regularly and he was like a, he's a big name like i really want to work with this guy you know what i mean um and, and so it helps you know what i mean it, it, it's just another for me social media is just another way to reach out and connect with people you know, well i mean it's how point. it's how i feel like you know we don't ha we don't see each other all that often right mm -hmm. um but it feels like we see each other all the time through social media whether it be instagram or whatever and you know you also post videos of yourself or, or behind the scenes type yeah. things and uh, that's another thing is you you really do a lot of you do demos yeah um you have you know you post videos and stuff on your behind the scenes of, of what you're doing and and what's the hope with that are you playing you know uh i i have um like like we were talking earlier, I was saying how my point of view. I, I feel like it's really like my point of view, and people need to see it. Of that, um, I just to you know, I think just to put out what I do because it makes you. I forgot who's behind the scenes that I saw. Oh, uh, th uh, this guy named C, uh, C. M. De La Vega. Mm -hmm. He does um, all the motion work for um, the NFL networks. Mm -hmm. And when I was looking on how to do motion posters. I Googled that and his YouTube channel was the only one coming up. Mm -hmm. So I learned to do motion posters from, from his, uh, from his YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And I just remember thinking since you're, I'm learning that, right. It, it takes me like an entire day to figure out. How, I mean, I could do it. I got to figure it out. Right. And it takes me an entire day, but seeing his YouTube channel and seeing everything, I'm like, man, this guy's like an expert in motion graphics and, and knows how to do well. If I get a big job, heck no, I'm not doing, you know, all the motion poster stuff. I'm going to, you know, hire it out and get it done in a more efficient time. What I t what takes me a day or two to do, he could probably do in like two, th two to three hours. Mm -hmm. So that on that alone, it made me, made me realize if you put out stuff, you, if you put out your best stuff on how you do it, it also makes you look appear, which you are as an expert. As an expert, yeah. You know what I mean? And, and because at the end of the day, um, when I speak or I teach, the reality of the fact is 
sadly, it's like 99% of those people are not going to act upon it. Right. You know what I mean? They're just curious or they just want to see it. Yeah. So I, I'm not worried about people copying my style. And if you are copying my style, then that, dude, that sucks for you. <laughs> because it's like, you're not really an artist. And you're not a creator. You're a replicator. You, right. know, you need to look to someone else to, you know, to see how to do stuff so uh that's that's my main goal if you i do that, your own flair to it yeah. yeah um and so my goal for that uh which i do have a 10-part series that somebody asked me about um i'm just like kind of working out all the details because I'm, I'm collaborating with a few um companies uh it's called breaking down the image where i literally have like a like an image like this mm -hmm. and i have an overhead cam and I literally draw the setup on it and explain the whole story. Oh, yeah, I've seen this. You, I, I've I posted seen a preview on the Pro Photo yeah, yeah, account. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so that one I, I'm hoping that uh, um, that that does, that helps out. You know what I mean? And, yeah. I and people could see my, my creative process and how it works. And, and the goal with that again is to like if you, if you want to hire me, you, you could kind of see how I think, how it works, and, and my thought process. Yeah. I before think, before even I think there's me. no doubt that any any potential client of yours could go online and know who you are and how you are on a shoot. Yeah. By just Googling you, mm -hmm. you know, it's like that's not necessarily the same for anybody else. Yeah, you know. Um, well, that's great. Um, and so, what would you say to somebody, you know, looking back that's coming through? You know, we're we're now thirty five, and yeah. we got into this industry. I don't know, almost fifteen years ago now. Yeah, I, mean, maybe I, I started. Less. I mean, you started. You knew what you wanted. So you started before me. I think I I started photography in two thousand and six. Okay. 2005 ish. Yeah. So been about 13 years. You've been a little 15, right? Yeah. A little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before before that, even in <laughs> high school, I was I was shooting for the local paper. So you're so you're smart. You didn't listen to people. I did. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I I you know it was a different a different thing. You know, you were really into the the higher production stuff. And well, originally I wanted to be an action photographer like Walter Yost, and I oh, shot a little bit okay. of every. I shot everything. I shot weddings, engagement sessions, uh -huh. uh, and then I found out I just I'd love coming up with an idea and, and expressing it visually. I ran into him on the uh, street. I guess it's been almost a year ago now, but he lives up in the Upper West Side where I do, or has a place, or oh, something really? like that. And I'm supposed to get him on the podcast. He said he w he said he would, but he's do it, man. But I, he's I, he's, I've, he's I've an older him. guy. Goes to Florida in the winter, so you got to catch him when he's here. You know? Yeah, no, I've never met him, man. I wish I could. I heard nothing but great things about him. So. Oh yeah, yeah. He's he's a cool guy, definitely. Um, so what what advice would you give to to somebody wanting to you know follow their dreams or follow you follow what you do to get into photography and and uh, your world? You know, it's funny. The best well, okay. The, the best advice um, could I say a director Brad gave me uh, really good advice, but I also mm -hmm. have my own. Uh, do, do we need to censor stuff or could I say a direct? Just that's fine. Be I mean, it's too bad. Huh? <laughs> no, it's not bad. So the very first assignment Brad gave me for was the Shane Scope on the the one where the two looks. Um, I remember really like I was like super excited when he gave me an assignment. Then when he told me how he wanted it to look, I felt like I got like stabbed right here. I'm like, man, I hate how it's gonna look. And then it was really sweet what he told me before. He's like, Alexis, um, I loved working with you at the Eddie Adams workshop. I, I loved your work, and more importantly, I love you, and I want you to be our guy. You know, when we need something out in California. Uh -huh. He's like, do a great job in assignment. He's like, keep it simple. Have fun and don't fuck it up. No, fuck it up. Yeah, that right. that was like, dude. That's like he said. That, I'm like, whoa, dude. That's he told me that. <laughs> um, but that was literally that literally is really really good advice. I didn't listen to him. I didn't keep this, keep it simple, and yeah. it certainly messed it up. Yeah. But I survived that. You yeah. know, and I did what I thought what I what, you know what was important to me. Um, so every bit's a learning process. Definitely, I've, you know, you learn something in every shoot. So I would say that's the best advice I've given. The best advice I could give to people is to don't listen to anyone. Listen to your intuition. Right. Um, and any advice people are giving you realize that it's from their perspective and their experiences and their insecurities, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I fell in love with shooting, um, you know, kind of set up stuff like this. And I don't like doing action anymore. Right. Um, so uh, when I do a talk, I have a picture that I took during the swim meet when I did all the swim portraits of, um, you know, um, I think it was Ryan Lochte or a big name swimmer, mm -hmm. you know, what's in this lane. So there was like like 13 photographers huddled over trying to get that shot. Mm -hmm. So I took, you know, a picture of that and I'm like, you know what? I, the older I get, the more I realize that like, you know, you only have so much energy and effort you can put into things. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, I don't want to, I don't have it enough in me to fight for an action shot like that. That to me, um, you know, I don't mean to disrespect any sports photographers. It's just a snapshot yeah. that I got next to you is going to get. Right. So I'd rather invest my energy and focus it on, on portraiture and stuff that I love. Yeah. And what I always like to And you have more control. In, in, yeah, in theory, you have more control. Right. Um, and I always like to say, if if someone's listening out there and your dream is to do action photos, and what I just said talked you out of it, you were never meant to do action photos. So yeah. why I said not listen to people is if someone says something and, and they completely like, 
give you reasons on not to do something, your your whole experience should be like, you know, screw that Bring guy. Bring it on. Screw what he says, yeah. like, right? Um, and even if you fail, fail in your terms, and, and that's actually true success. You know what I mean? You tried it, and, and you gave it all you had. And, and so this kind of, I know that that's, don't listen to it. Listen to yourself. If you really want to do it, figure it out. You know what I mean? And, and that's that's the biggest thing. You know what I mean? And uh, um, it, it'd be that. I, I've had people ask me a lot of good questions. Um, I have a few people come up to me in Photo Plus that, that follow me, that recognize me. That's just pretty cool. Uh, and one of the biggest things uh, is I get a lot of questions about Light. Um, is that he, you know, wanted to get his first camera, and then he wanted to save up to get lighting. Mm -hmm. uh, and I told him, you know, rent the lights. You know what I mean? Don't yeah. don't. But my biggest mistake that I did starting out too was I wanted to shoot action. Uh, this was 2005, 2006. I went out and I bought two 1D Mark IIs, a 400 2.8 IS, mm -hmm. and a 200 1.8. Mm -hmm. That's like 20 grand right there. Yeah. Right? With no real business plan or idea. And, and if you know the business of action photos, it's not really like. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Especially. Really yeah. yeah. So I learned so much from that to never do that again. And I use a lot of lights. And when I direct now, too, um, when you direct, you use so many different kinds of lights. You use HMIs, you use right, Jokers, right, right. you use RE sky panels and everything, and they're so expensive, it doesn't make business sense to go out and buy them. So if you buy something and you invest it, uh, it, it can be a good investment, but creatively, you're you're tied down to whatever you own if right. you're only gonna use that, yeah. right? Versus what I do, I come up with an idea first and then find out what gear I need to, to execute it. Yeah, it's great. So I'm not loyal necessarily to any gear or, or you know love gear like a lot of people do i'm loyal to the vision of what i'm trying to express yeah and there are certain tools for the certain job yeah and and, and uh i you know i'm not gonna say any names but i know big name photographers uh, and i know people that work with them directly that don't own any gear they rent it all huh. and, and i'm that totally makes sense because you see they go out on, on sets and they'll have like you know 10 pro photo packs and, and all that and i've done that before too on shoots and people are like do you own all that stuff it's like no dude i rent it yeah <laughs> you know yeah, I guess it makes sense. Yeah, totally. Well, I, I hope that I never have to deal with a shoot with 10 pro photo packs. I can tell you that much. That sounds insane to me. Um, well, awesome. I really appreciate uh, that. Is there anything that, that we haven't talked about that you wanted to talk about? I know you said you had a, there was a couple questions, but. Yeah, I had a full of questions. Um, there, what was it? You were, you were talking about something. I, I did a shoot with, uh, I mean, still under NDA, but it was with someone. Um, uh, about sharing ideas and doing BTS. Mm -hmm. And um, it was someone really, uh, oh, two things about this. Um, he was talking about uh, how open uh, he, he is sharing his greatest ideas. And he was saying, on, you know, believing in yourself and not listening to people. He was saying his most successful, and this guy's really successful outside the realm, realm of sports. Mm -hmm. He was saying that his most successful ideas uh, were his most difficult to get people to like buy into or believe. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there was an experience in the photographer on set uh, that said, uh, um, you know, that there's a certain truth to that because he's like, he heard that, like, uh, don't worry about people are stealing your ideas because mm -hmm. if they're any good, you're going to have to shove it down their effing throat anyways. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're not going to believe you. So uh, that's that's something that stood out to me because uh, um, this guy's, you know, the stuff he's done, you've probably been involved with the stuff he's, he's done because he's, like, super successful mm -hmm. and, and just – hearing the way he thinks and all that and figuring stuff out that's not made like like a lot of photographers when they come and ask for questions it's like don't be so i don't know what to say the word like so needy or questioning like if you can't do something try to be self-sufficient and figure it out mm -hmm. you know what i mean because a lot of the stuff that i do is not out there right and, and you just have to be resourceful and figure it out yeah well that's cool i mean cutting edge stuff you're always pushing the pushing the bounds i'm always impressed with with what you're coming up with next it's always new it's always beautiful thank you man um how much time we got i could look uh see a few good questions that i got um well if you've got one or two quick ones we can bang them out here okay. at the end okay cool let's see so he so alexis put on uh, uh, on his uh instagram to ask some questions so he was uh gonna answer a few of these questions i think do i have it here let's see Okay, I do. So um, I have. Uh, I'm gonna answer this one because I have samples I could show you. So this is um, from my boy Chrisan. He asked me, "It's pitch black and you have one light source to photograph with. Where would you place it?" Um, that, I mean, that's really subjective. Um, it, it just depends what you're trying to say. But the image here on the right hand side of this guy Duncan, that's one light source that's technically pitch dark. Um, every shoot that I do is pitch dark because I shoot ISO 100 f 16 and I max out the shoulder sync speed. Mm -hmm. So I, I knock out all the ambient light. So that's a one light source right there. You could put it there and that'll give you that mood. 
and then uh, the two here are one light sources too. So it just depends on the, on the mood. This is just one beauty dish, uh, and it's kind of overhead it and, and just move the light around, and those are two samples. That's what, in this case, and I when put you're on shoots like this, you have more than just the one light. You're just using one of like. Do you usually on on shoots? Let's say for this assignment, do you usually have like? 10 different lights for another uh, crazy shot that you're looking yeah, to do? Yeah, for this one, I, I had five lights. So I had two 10A packs with three heads and two B, B1s. Um, and you kind of just have to try to have them ready. Um, the reason why you, I use a lot of lights is because, you, you know, like if I was doing a portrait of you and you were like, you know, Tom Brady, uh, or you are super well, important, you. you know what I mean? Uh, and I only have, you know, 10 minutes with you, but I want to do like five setups, you have to leave them all set up at right. once and then just boom, boom, boom. Take and sometimes it's one out. light here, two lights here, three lights there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or what I did with the SI shoot, I put them all like just like on one set. If you're limited to space and you could just cycle through them yeah. real fast. Um, and then uh, let's see, do we have time for one more? Yeah, one more. Okay, cool. One more. Oh, Ed, Mahol Ed Maholland says hello. Oh, what's up, Ed? He says, what's up, actually? Yeah, Ed helped me out immensely, too, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, when I first started out. I had a lot of, uh, a lot of people help me out. But one thing I do want to say for every person to help me out, which is like Al Bello, Brad Smith, or Ed, I had like other 10 people try to talk me out out of doing stuff or just like saying, oh, dude, this sucks, or don't do it, or blah, blah, you know what I mean? Right. So that's why I say don't, don't listen to people. Right. <laughs> Some people just follow your, follow your heart, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. I know that was a really good one. Sorry, guys. I'll answer these uh, uh, directly on my IG since we didn't get to them. Um, okay, I, I, I'm going to answer two real quick. Uh, I know Ab Cisse. You know Ab? Uh, of right. course I know He asked Ab me a Cisse. question. He asked me this twice, so I'm going to get to you. He said, what color gels do you use? I use uh, all the gels, but the ones that use the most are CTO and CTS gels. And I use a combination of both to get the look right in camera as much as I can. Uh -huh. And then I finesse it in pose. Uh -huh. And then the... Um, and then here's the, the last question I'll, I'll ask, I'll answer. Let's see, Ghost Production, I think. Um, what was your biggest breakthrough when learning lighting? Um, it was uh, actually realizing what a field does, what a field light does. Yeah. Like, like it was explained horribly in my school. Uh, and like literally, I kid you not, like I was like, they explained it. And then like three years later, I was like, oh, that's what the teacher meant. <laughs> right? And I got it. And I was like, that happens to me so many times. So if people are discouraged or anything like that, I'm the most disorganized, slowest learning person, like ADD. I could freaking barely read still. I, I got a 960 on my SATs. I retook them and got a 900. You know, who, who does that? Retakes it. <laughs> so uh, if, if you're thinking the stuff that I do is com complicated, it's not. Like, you just have to have a passion and dedicated and hard work and be dedicated to what you're doing, and you'll be able to figure it out. Right on, right on. Well, thank you, Alexis, for, for coming here. Um, I hope that uh, a lot of people got these books. These are always great yeah, to see. You always have passing some, them out. You yeah. have great marketing material, by the way. Well, thank you're you. One, you're one of the guys that has always got something new to show. And, I try and, to, yeah. And, yeah. It's, you know, which is a hustle in its own because, yeah. I mean, just dealing with putting my – I hate editing my own work. I think you like editing your work. I hate editing my work. Sir, I, I like being out now and shooting. Yeah, well, people. yeah, exactly. Oh, but uh, could I give two quick shout-outs? Yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, to Canon, uh, the Canon rep in my area, Ken Calvin Anderson. Thank you so much for all the support. You guys rock. Uh, and Bay Photo Lab, they, this is where I get all my books and my, my marketing collateral. So Right on. Okay, dude. Well, um, thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, you know, follow us on all of our Instagram. Follow Alexis Alexis Quaresma on yep. on all the Insta Instagrams and and socials. We'll see you again next time. Take care, guys. Bye. Thank you.